Hi everyone, welcome to my Soul Makota talk. My name is Chris Bergstresser, and I'm going to be talking today about a prototype clearinghouse for LARP information. What it might look like, what features it would need, and why it seems to be so hard to do. Then, I'm going to be demoing a proof of concept that I put together, which I'm calling Peacock. Before I start, I'd like to apologize for not being on camera. I don't have a great video set up here, and frankly, I think all that you're missing are two of the most giant zits in the universe, which have appeared on my forehead. So this talk is going to be divided into four parts. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about the problem, and why things don't seem to work as well as you might hope they would. Then, I'm going to lay out what I think a solution would need to look like. I'm then going to talk about the proof of concept that I put together. And finally, I'm going to demo that proof of concept. Now, I'd hope to follow this up with a discussion uh, to follow up on some of the points to see if anybody was interested in helping out or thought that it was worth working on or not for whatever reason. Uh, and I'd really like to continue that anyway. So if people have questions or want to start discussions, please do that on Facebook and I'll jump in as soon as I'm able to. So, what is the problem as I see it? Well, the problem that I'm trying to solve has two ways of looking at it, and they're kind of the flip side of the same coin. Um, as a player, how do you get information about what LARPs are running? Maybe you have some free time in the summer, you're interested in playing uh, a LARP during that period. How, how do you get any information about what's actually available during that time? And on the flip side of that, how do you get information about your LARP in the hands of the people who would be interested in knowing about it? As an organizer, it's incredibly hard to advertise these things to make sure that people know about it. And as a player, it seems to be equally hard to find out information. So why is there this disconnect? Well, we use a lot of tools to try and bridge this gap. So People will use email lists. If you've played a game by organizers, they likely have your email. They will email you when they're designing something new. Uh, they will have Facebook posts. So there will be posts available on Facebook. Uh, there are certain groups that you can join, which largely consist of advertisements for various games. Word of mouth is a big one. A lot of information about LARP simply comes from knowing people who are connected in the LARP community who are talking about these things and having them bring up LARPs. But there's a, there's a huge one that's missing, and I'm kind of wondering why that is. And that's online calendars. So you would think that there would be some place where this information was gathered that you could find it. And... I spent a lot of time thinking about calendars. Uh, for a while there, I ran a calendar of my own uh, to try and gather this information. And so I've looked a lot about what's out there, and none of them seems to be really working as well as you might hope. And I think that the problem comes down to a very simple kind of question, which is, who updates these things? So, if you've got hundreds of LARPs worldwide, there's no way that a single person can keep track of them. And relying on a single person to gather that information and put it in a place and keep it updated and fresh and remove LARPs which are cancelled or shifted to different times, it's just impossible. And I think that a lot of the calendars which are out there end up responding to this by shrinking down what they're actually interested in gathering information about to something manageable. And so you end up with a bunch of small LARP calendars, all of which are focused on very small areas. And if you're looking for information, you have to go to dozens of these calendars and kind of gather all of it together if your interests don't happen to fall entirely within the scope of one of them. And on the other side of that, organizers can't simply update it in one place, they have to go to all of these different places and update that information separately. And that's an incredible uh, amount of effort, so most don't even bother. So, so what do the requirements for this look like? If you were trying to solve this problem, how, how would you go about solving it? 
And what we're talking about here is a clearinghouse, a central resource where information is collected and then disseminated out. Now, we need a way that we can centrally collect this information, which doesn't add an incredible amount of work for everybody who's in the system. Okay, what else do we need? Well, if we were trying to solve this problem for the LARP community, the LARP community is international. So the tools that we need to use should be international as well. It needs to be simple for organizers. So the information about your LARP should be a very simple, straightforward process to make available so that everybody can uh, get that information in their hands. On the other side of that, it should be simple for players. If you're interested in information about games which are running in a particular time or a particular location or in a particular language, it shouldn't be very hard to get that information. And, and this extends to where it shouldn't be hard to share that information with other people. And finally, I think that it needs minimal oversight. The place where most of these calendars fall down is in the administration. It takes a lot of time to manage these things. And so in order for this to work at scale, it has to be essentially self-running. It, it should require minimal effort to get the information in there, to keep it in there, to keep it fresh, to keep it updated, and to remove it when it's out of date. So uh, I was looking at these problems, and I thought I could put together a prototype address these to see how it worked. And I came up with Peacock. And whenever I mention this, people say, Peacock? Why did you call it Peacock? And it's not that interesting a story, but to avoid the questions, there is in mythology a watchman. Um, the watchman was set by Hera to guard a particular uh, woman who was turned into a cow to protect it from Zeus. Uh, the watchman's name was Argos. Zeus sent uh, Hermes to uh, essentially take care of the watchman. Hermes showed up, put the watchman to sleep, proceeded to kill the watchman. Now, the watchman was renowned for having hundreds of eyes. And Hera, to commemorate the Watchman's sacrifice, had those eyes placed onto a peacock. And the design of this system is one that is designed to look at hundreds of different things at once. I'm calling this a federated system. And a federated system is one that is composed of a bunch of individual components. So you have a bunch of independent little systems, all of which interoperate to create a kind of larger system that functions as a single unit. And so I'll give you an example of how this is designed. Um, let's say that you have a web server. Here's a server. This has information about your LARP on it. Probably information for people. What you do to work with Peacock is you create some code. It should be a very simple kind of code. It should be very straightforward. It's not that complicated, but you put it onto your server. So it's sitting on your website. And then you tell Peacock about it. And what Peacock does is now, every day or so, it will request information from your server. And it will look at that information, and it will make it available for other people. So the information lives on your server, but is gathered, collated, and then presented um, by Peacock. Now, this gets exciting when you start to add additional servers, because what happens is Peacock will fetch that information off of all of these individual servers and make them all available. Now, 
you could just say, well, why don't we make Peacock a database? You put your information into the database and it sits there and then people can search it. But where this gets particularly interesting is it allows anybody to set up their own server. And then they can get that information independently and they can make that information available. This decentralizes the authority in the system. It means that multiple providers can participate. So you can have people who are publishing this information, largely LARP organizers, who are publishing websites anyway. Uh, and you can have other people who are getting this information separate from whatever ends up being built by other people. That means that the ownership of this is diverse, it's diffuse, it's not concentrated in a single person's hands. So it's immune to certain kinds of attacks. Okay, so here is an example of what the code looks like. So here is the information for a game which ran last year, uh, about a year ago. Um, it is in a format which called called YAML. It's very simple, it's very easy to read, and you see you're presenting information which is very, very straightforward for organizers. You've got a title for your game, you've got a description of it, you've got a start date and an end date, a uh, date which tickets are available, you list organizers, you put a URL, you put a location, how much it costs. The fields are pretty straightforward. So here we have a title, start date, end date, description, link to ticket date. Um, these are just the information which gets presented to people who are coming to look at the information. You also have fields like organizers, language, and tags. These are all things which can have multiples. So you can list multiple organizers. If you have a couple of companies which are collaborating, or if you end up having uh, a couple of different languages, you're running a game which is in both French and Spanish, say. You, you can put that in there. Uh, tags are designed, or intended at least, so that you can put certain tags on games to help steer people. So if you're running something that is a vampire game or a blockbuster game, whatever that means, you can tag it. And hopefully people will come up with useful tags and will share them, and these will become... Uh, another way of filtering down the games that you're interested in. Now, at the moment, the only two, uh, the types of games you can have, or the type of LARPs, you can have a game or you can have a convention. You specify a location, and what the system does is it uses that location to geocode the information. So we have both coordinates of where it is on the map, and we have a country where this is located. So you can filter these things based on either the specific location or uh, the country that it's uh, located in. And finally, you can specify the price for these things uh, based in euros or pounds or dollars or whatever your currency is. Whatever your denomination is, it doesn't matter. You specify that in the local currency, and the system has a, a couple of clever ways of dealing with that information. Okay, so uh, let's get to the demo. This is obviously the most frightening part of the talk. Uh, this is running code which has been stable for a while, but hasn't actually been particularly well tested. So, um, I don't know what's going to happen if a bunch of people hit it once. Uh, I should also say that this hasn't actually been particularly well tested in any way possible. So, there's a lot of things in the site which don't work quite right. The, there are things which are broken, I'm getting error messages on a couple of things, so... Um, good luck to you. Uh, this is designed largely as a proof of concept, as a prototype to test out some of these ideas. We, we, this needs reworking significantly if it was going to be moved forward with. But the basic functionality is in place and seemed to be working the last time I looked at it. So uh, if you want to take a look at the live system, you can go to https 
PeacockSubtlety.com. Um, so why don't we do that? So if we go to So here we have the uh, opening screen. This is intended to try and help ease people into the system. It doesn't really work. You can just hide it. Uh, and what we see here is some basic information. This is just some of the initial data that I loaded into the system. You can, if you want to get some data to work with, if we go up to settings and we choose use fake data, and then we reload, we will get that again, I will hide that permanently, we get a huge listing of a bunch of made-up LARPs. Some of which sound kind of cool, actually. All right, so if you look here, we've got a listing, we, take, we can tell what the, the name of the event is, if it's a game, uh, we've listed some conventions as well, um, we've got dates for them, locations, and we're listing the organizers here. Uh, we can look for this information also on a calendar. So if we look here, we have them listed in a calendar format to see what's available. And finally, the map. The map is actually working, but you have to reload it. But everything is listed and gets put onto the map. Uh, if we go back to here, in the list view, you can click on any of these. And you see we have here, we've got a game currently active. Uh, it's got a price listed, it's got a number of players, it's got a location. Uh, this one is apparently in Spanish, German, and French. Again, all of this is made up data, so don't expect any of it to make any sense. Um, if we look over here, we've got something. This has two prices listed. Uh, now, if we look at the particular prices here, you'll notice that this is listed in, I believe, rubles and Australian dollars and it has helpfully converted these to US dollars for me. Uh, we can change what it translates these to if we go up and choose a currency. So if I go to Euro, it will convert it using the current conversion rate to show you how much this costs in whatever currency you decide that you want it listed in. And also up here, what we have is we have the ability to change the language. Now, I used Google Translate for all of these, which means the translations are completely fake and ridiculous. But you can see here, if we choose that, it does change the date formats. It changes all of the text that we're using along the sides, the buttons, log in, log out. All of these things can be changed. Um, at will. Okay, uh, you'll notice here that we have two buttons here for watch and attending. Um, they're grayed out because we're not logged in, so you, it doesn't make any sense. You can't watch something if you they don't know who's watching it. Um, we can go and log in. You can, if we went back, um, you can log in with Google, and it'll present this, which is probably the simplest way to log in. Uh, you can go through the registration uh, that did seem to be working the last time that I tried it. Let's find out. Excellent. So now that we've logged in, we now have the ability to indicate that we are watching a game or that we are attending a game. 
So the system knows if you go in here and you say that you're attending certain games, and you could make that list available to other people if you wanted it to be available to other people. Uh, similarly, if you say that you're watching a game, if this information changes for whatever reason, so if it's no longer running on the same dates, or if the organizer list changes, whatever, you will get an email letting you know that this information has changed. So, for example, you could easily put the information for a game that you know is running in the fall. And if you don't know the prices yet, you can just put the information up. And when the prices become available, everyone that said they were watching this will get an email letting them know that the price has been updated. In addition, uh, you may have noticed that one of the fields that we have is a ticket date, which is the date the tickets become available. We can do things like, if you are watching a game, when tickets become available, two days before that we will send you an email letting you know that tickets are going to go on sale for a game which you are watching. Now, it's things like this that I think demonstrate what the advantages are of having uh, this information collated. Uh, and you can make it available in whatever format. You can do whatever you want with the information which people make available. And I think this makes a lot more sense than trying to build these features into each individual LARP calendar which are out there. All right, at this point, if we go back, we can click on Peacock and let's look. We, have, we don't have any current save filters. Uh, filters are what I'm calling what this listing is. At the moment, the default, we want the dates which are after today. Um, we can change that. So, for example, if we only wanted to see LARPs which were before today, we could do that. And here we have a listing of all of the LARPs which are in the system which happened before this current date. And we can change a lot of these things. So, if we aren't worried about the dates but we wanted pricing, here we can say we want to limit the price. And maybe we're interested in doing this in, say, euros. And we're only interested in stuff which is under, uh, let's say, between 500 euros and 100 euros. Boom. And what you can see here is these are not listed in euros. But what the system does is it knows what the conversion rates are. It's going in there and it is calculating that. So when you do a search, it's translating all of the individual prices into uh, whatever currency that you are doing your filtering on. Uh, you can turn on certain uh, organizers. So if we turn off the price, but we turn that on, we're not going to find anything because it's all fake data. Turn that off. Uh, we have certain tags available. So if we want everything which was a blockbuster, but we don't want anything Nordic, we can filter on that. And what you can do when you have these filters is now you can go and save them. So now that we've got that saved, why don't we go in here and we will turn on only Nordic. We can save that. And now if we move between the two, we have this available. So you can create different restrictions. And you can create these filters and save multiple filters, and you will get those presented to you when you come to the site. Now, of course, you can go and delete these, but one of the most interesting things here is if we go to, say, this filter. If I click this button, it's now shared. And what that means is I now have a link that I can give out to anybody else. 
And if they go to that link, they're going to have the exact same filter that I created available to them. So if they use that link and they come here, they're going to be able to see the same settings that you put into your filter as theirs. And they'll be able to use that so you can put together listings of you know, whatever focus you want and you can share that with other people. Um, what's particularly interesting with this though is I can now copy that link to the clipboard as a calendar link. And if I go here and I do that, I will end up with an ICS file. And what you can do with an ICS file is you can import it into calendars. So if I use this link, I can download that and I have a listing of all of those which will get entered into a calendar. I can go into Google and I can specify this link and it will automatically get the latest that are updated and put those into a Google Calendar. It's a live link that will always have the latest that are on this filter. So you'll always have it available. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I'm really happy with that. So what now? Well, if I was going to move forward on this, the site really needs a rebuild from scratch. There's a lot of testing code. There's a lot of kind of dead ends that had to be worked through. And it needs to be rewritten. And we also really need to be rethink how people are going to interact with it. As you've seen, the UI is terrible. Uh, it's a bunch of stuff that I just threw together quickly to kind of test out the, the fundamentals of the system. It needs to be redone. We need to think about security. At the moment, there, there isn't any security. And we need to have some idea of how to model that, what the possible threats to the system would be, and how we can mitigate those. Uh, the UI and UX needs a complete redesign, and I think if I was going to push forward this, this is a real project, I would throw out what we have, I would rebuild it, and I would start putting in simple pieces to get up to what I think a minimum subset of the critical features are, and then slowly add them as people start using the system. In addition, I, I need help. <laughs> uh, we need help designing the UI, we need help choosing, narrowing down what fields there should be published, we need help translating them. Some of this I don't do particularly well, and I'm not really interested in trying to level up my skills to do it uh, effectively. Some of it is just completely beyond what I'm actually capable of. So that's, that's Peacock. Um, I'm really interested in finding people who can help me move this forward. Uh, if people are excited about it, if people like the promise, if people want to get involved, please let me know. Um, if you've got questions or you think that there are parts that need rethought, I, I'm happy to discuss it. I would love to discuss it, even if I don't move forward on this, even if you're not interested in helping out. So please uh, get in touch. And thanks for listening.